yesterday, either in the training room or just moving through the facility today. Um, I think we came out as healthy as we can after a big physical game like that, and so that's always a positive when you can get a win and, and don't feel like you got banged, too banged up during the course of it. A um, number of positive things that came out. Uh, one, uh, need to say something, Ben Ellison, uh, most career touchdowns for a tight end uh, in this game. Again, uh, exciting for him. Uh, shows his career, the success he's had, and just how we've been able to utilize that, that position room. And uh, those guys continue to perform for us. Uh, ran the ball for 330 yards. Had a, did, uh, had a good day on special teams. I really thought Garrett Wegner had an outstanding day. Uh, kickoffs, punts, uh, you know, I think every kickoff we had was, was through the end zone or a touchback. Uh, and, and that was critical for us. It didn't matter if it was into the wind or with the wind uh, on Saturday. And so really pleased with how Garrett was performing. Uh, red zone defense, uh, you've heard me talk about it probably as a coordinator and then uh, even, even as a head football coach. But uh, field goals aren't going to get you beat. Um, and uh, you know, our defense did a good job. And then the number one word that we talked about last week was finish. And we felt like uh, two weeks ago we didn't finish some plays, didn't finish some series, uh, didn't finish some drives. Uh, not, not saying that we were perfect on Saturday, Saturday by any means, but you know, at the end of the first half we were able to finish by not giving up points, and then we were able to finish the football game with a victory. And so uh, at the end of it, you know, our, our kids, they did exactly what I asked them to do, and that was come out and finish and compete for 60 minutes. Uh, there, there are a few things that I think – and I. You know, some big things that we need to continue to work on. Ten penalties is way too many. Uh, and, you know, I was joking with the captains this morning in my captain's meeting, and I said the Bison uh, stopped themselves, it had the best red zone defense all day. Either we were stopping them with our defense or we were stopping them with penalties, uh, or stopping ourselves with penalties in the red zone. And so that's something that I think we can definitely clean up. Uh, and, and unfortunately, there are a lot of no-effort penalties. They're, they're, they're jumping off sides. They're, they're, they're things that... You can control mentally. Uh, if it's a holding call, if it's a pass interference that gets called, I understand. Uh, th those are in the heat of the game, and those are high, high effort, high energy penalties that just happen in the game of football. But when you're making penalties that, um, you know, they're, they're all because of you at that time. We need to do a better job of that. Uh, red zone offense, got to continue to stress that. We got to convert better or do a better job of converting in the red zone, and I think uh, we'll continue to work on that. And then the run defense. Um, you know, we've played better. We will play better. Uh, you know, but I, th I thought they had an outstanding back, and I thought their offensive line complimented him well. Uh, I'm not taking anything away from South Dakota State. I'm just finding things that I know that we need to continue to improve on during the course of the last four games of the season. Um, you know, other comments that I'll, because I know it's going to get at the two point play, uh, probably in, in hindsight should have kicked the PAT, but at that moment, I probably let my emotions get the better of me. and. We had just scored two touchdowns in the last three minutes of play, and I felt like, regardless, let's get in the end zone one more time. What kind of message would that send to them? And I know it was only a two-point touchdown, but uh, I felt like our the motivation, or I shouldn't say, but just how our kids were at that moment. It, it, scoring another two points could be critical throughout the rest of the game. And uh, I, I knew we were up by 10. Uh, I have a sheet with me on the sideline. I look at it before every series just to make sure, because we do have the ability to score explosively, and uh, it was just a, a bad call by myself, and I'll, I'll take all the heat for it, and that's okay. Um, you know, it, it's, like I said, it, it, it's nice when you get to learn and you still win. Um, but uh, um, otherwise, uh, I'll, I'll open it up for questions at this time. Kobe Johnson did play? Did he play? Did not play. Uh, just did feel that uh, in the run game uh, and a lot of the, uh, the power sweep stuff we were doing, that this game just fit kind of where he was at. And so it uh, wasn't that he's injured or uh, had did anything wrong, just uh, one of the games that, that uh, didn't fit into our plans as much. Uh, Early in the year, seemed like more of a power guy, but in the last three games, he's had big runs, so a bunch of 50-plus runs and 71 plus. Is he becoming more of an explosive type running back, or how do you the way he's played over the last Well, season? I think he's always been explosive. Uh, uh, sometimes the the nickname, the power back, uh, comes just from when probably we hit a lot of times in the eye. Um, and so he gets associated with being a hill back because we're running power with him or we're running some sort of gap scheme. Uh, we're attacking the line of scrimmage with him. But, you know, he, he has great speed. He has great – you've heard me say it. He has great f footwork. He can make people miss. You, you know, that, that last uh, big run of his, I mean, being able to uh, – 
an arm tackle is not going to cut. You know, Adam's a powerful kid, but uh, still has good speed where he can he can outrace people as well. He's listed now number one on the depth chart. Is that significant of anything, Cofield? No, I, I wouldn't have known that that changed. So uh, uh, that probably just another head coach mistake. <laughs> you played that FCS kickoff game much like Youngstown did. At this at this point of the year, does it make it seem even longer since you started? So much earlier than other schools. So the Youngstown played the FCS kickoff this year. You guys did that a yep. few years ago. Does that make it now? Here we are, November. Even the season even longer than it usually is. You know, going back to those few years that we did play that game, I think it does. Uh, it it I, those might even, I don't know. I can't remember if those were twelve game seasons or not. But it does add up a little bit. Um, one of the benefits of probably playing in that FCS kickoff, there usually is a bi another bye week thrown in there, so you get to play one game. Do a great job of evaluating your personnel and your talent and what you're good at, maybe what, what you need to improve on. You know, when, when you don't play in that game, you only you get one, and, and like us, we're going to play eight straight here, and, and we're going to have to learn on the run. What's your big takeaway from this hard fight, hard nose, all the emotion, everything? You guys come out with that win. What's your takeaway, and what do you hope your young guys take away with this? Well, I, I hope the, like, as I said earlier, one of the positives is that we were able to finish and. We need to continue to work through. Set, uh, the, there's penalties. Uh, the, you know, there's always negative plays that happen out there. There's, we gave up seven explosives, uh, but our kids continue just to keep coming back and, and lining back up and playing extremely hard. And so I was pleased with that. Uh, at halftime, there was no fire and brimstone talk. I mean, we could control everything that we were playing poorly, we just weren't playing uh, efficient all the time. And so, uh, you know, every little play matters. Um, being detailed in your assignment, being disciplined is critical as, as well because of the penalties. I'll go back to those things because I really think those got us off track a few times. We had, the, we, we were, had a good series going. We had an 11-play series. We had a penalty. We had a 15-play series. We had a penalty. And, and so just those little things right there, set you back, and, and, and now you're trying to get momentum again. Frustrating moments, but I, I think we can continue to learn through them. But, you know, what, what, a, what a Saturday. What, what, a, what a football game. And, and I respect South Dakota State, you know, and, and I had an opportunity to visit with Coach Stiglmeyer before the game, and uh, I've known him for years. And we, we joked 2008, he tried to hire me as a back and coach. And so uh, he was giving me a bad time about it, that uh, uh, how funny things work out. But uh, uh, they're a good football team, and, and, and they got some really talented players and good coaches. Were you okay with the, with the halfback pass, the, the Williams call on third and two that ended up in the interception? Did you guys reassess that, or are you with that I, call and all that stuff? Or? I, I, I trust our coordinators. Uh, you know, I, Tyler, I sit in a lot of meetings, and, and there's, there's vid, there was video evidence. You know, there's two halfback passes against South Dakota State. And uh, if, if you watch film, he's open. Now it just comes down to execution. It wasn't if it was a bad play or not. It was just players still have to execute at times, and, and we didn't get the edge blocked quite, quite as if we would like to. Uh, and so we'll go back and look. at the same time, it, it, you've heard me say I'm gonna. We would like to make people have to defend the entire football field. And you know, sometimes uh, in, in the past, I feel as if we play the game between the hashes, and we need to do some things that are a little bit different. And, and this one came back and, and got us. And, and I'll take the uh, – I gave Tyler permission to call it. Let's go. Pretty good between the hashes. That's why. <laughs> we, we have. I, I wouldn't say we're still. We, yeah. But we, we do have a better passing game right now. We've been able to pull some people out of the box uh, because of our passing game, because of having threats on either side. And uh, I, I'm excited about where we're at. We'll, we'll run the football when we need to run the football. And I think we've still done a pretty good job when you're averaging 300 yards a game. You're kind of getting a reputation as a riverboat gambler kind of head coach with the call and all that. I mean, so you okay with that, or is that I, you, okay? you know, I think some of these calls, if if the people who really know me would say they are 100% of what they would expect from Coach Ents. And so maybe that's part of the reason why they have been called. But I, I'm probably about as conservative a person as you'd ever find. Matt, on the fourth and inches, we all talk about Cofield, but what did you see from watching tape that you didn't see on the sideline? Well, I was, since the play was at our side, you kind of saw Josh Babich and, and the other guy who I think, you know, no one has ever said his name but did it on, because we were in 23 Ogre. It was our personnel group. The first time we'd ever been in it all year. Uh, the Ogre just means that we have an offensive lineman in an eligible number. 
Cody Mock was number 88. Cody was in. So the play before, the timeout, Cody lined up on the other. And, and so then we came back and put the formation uh, after the timeout called by SDSU. Uh, I think Cody Mock and uh, uh, Cordell Volson were critical. And they ate up the six technique, took the six technique up to the mic uh, and, and set the edge. Uh, Josh Babbage did a great job of getting a piece. And then Hunter Lukey did an outstanding job of just getting enough of that, of that corner trying to come down. I mean, all they were, they were in goal line defense in the middle of the field. It was goal line zone. You know? So if, if you were going to throw the ball, they, they were going to concede it. But they were going to pack the box with 11 guys. And uh, we ran similar things defensively here before. And so... Probably one of the benefits of, of the series between offense and defense uh, from South Dakota State is uh, it's a look that our offense has seen before in fall camp and in spring ball. Matt, when you take a look at Youngstown State now, what's a staple of a Bo Pelini led team? I think defensively they play extremely hard. Uh, they're the physical, uh, back end, really good football player. Um, I don't want to miss a name, but uh, uh, I think they're uh, Michael. Ray Anderson's a real good football player. Uh, the other guy that jumps out at me is uh, Cash Mitchell, their will. And then they're, they're starting what I would consider strong safety. Uh, Zaire Jones is a real good football player. Come down and and, and, and a crack. And so these guys play really good football on defense. And, and they're still similar to, to what they've done. They're going to be a too high bracket team, play some quarters, uh, and then occasionally some pressure. Uh, they're going to rely on the four to, to get after your quarterback. And for such a high win, what after taking a step down, so to speak. Uh, better. We're still got to finish the season. Uh, Trey Lance had 18 and Curry had runs. I know you talked about a pitch counter monitoring those runs. Yep. 18 too high. What's your thought on that number in this game and from well, that game and moving you know, forward? Two of them were, one was a sack, one was a sack. So, you know, and, and they're all called with the possibility of him keeping the football. Uh, there's always a read somewhere in there. We're not blocking someone, and, and the decision based on what that individual is. Uh, you know, I don't have a concern. Uh, we went into this game with the idea that we were going to quarterback run game. We played the same same out nine months ago, and, and, and the quarterback we had had 15 carries for 150. So the video evidence was there that they had struggled with quarterback run game. And so that's part of the, part of the process going into it, uh, and, and I don't have the staff. And, and, and uh, Ryan might be able to help me out. But I think he averaged close to five yards a carry if you subtract a sack, probably. I think that's a pretty good clip. You know, and I know our gain he had down by the end zone got negated by a, a personal foul. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not cons You know, I know it's probably about 80 carries so far this year. And uh, I think we've used other quarterbacks probably about in the same ratio. Youngstown played you guys about as tough as anybody the last three or four years. Is that just because they played? Defenses or something else going on where they match up well with you guys? To you had some heck of a game the last four years. I think really sound up front, offensive line, defensive line. So I think that uh, uh, always generates a, a great level of competition when two teams play. Uh, I think they have good skill. Coach Polini is an outstanding football coach, uh, and, and so I think defensively they do cause us some issues. Uh, they always have answers. Uh, they can make they make really good in-game adjustments. So it, it's going to be. For us to go on the road, we need to play well early during the course of the game. If you remember last time we were out there, I don't know if it was a, a, an early evening game or, a, or an evening game. Uh, I just know it was dark when it ended. But we didn't play very well early, and we kind of got ourselves behind uh, the eight ball a little bit. We need to, we need to get going early in this game and, and uh, establish. Uh, and they did a nice somewhat of a need. He never uh, again. I. We'll have a have, just try to keep our guys.
He warmed up on Saturday, uh, wasn't ready to go. Knock on wood, uh, Bobby and our medical staff to see where he's at, but it would be great to get him back. Have you had a look at the conference now, heading to the last month, to assess where things are at? I haven't looked at at all, and uh, all I know is we need to win one this week. What's his status? Uh, I'm still trying to recover from the, uh, uh, from his partially ACL and, and he can, uh, you know, just probably not where he needs to be from a health standpoint. You know, when you go on the road, you're all of a sudden limited to 64 guys dressing and, and they all have to have a critical role and be able to help, help your teams if they're not a starter on offense and defense. All right. Thanks guys.